you, sir. Thank you. To be able to see in our video our ministry for the past 15 years.
We just praise the Lord for the ministry He has entrusted to us and for the um, partners that we have in reaching Thai people in that country. And uh, again, uh, was mentioned a while ago, so uh, those of you who made the, the pledge, thank you very much. And uh, that's, that's really a blessing. At least I can go home. <laughs> uh, um, rejoicing, amen. Thank you, thank you um, for your prayers. And um, hopefully you continue to pray for us as I've shared the, the need a while ago. Amen. Um, I'm going to share the word of God. Can I sing one more song, preacher? <laughs> uh, sorry, ma'am, you go up again, then you go down. <laughs> it's uh, 216. Times the day seems long, our trials hard to bear. We're tempted to complain, to murmur and despair, but Christ will soon appear to cut. His bride away, all tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Life day will soon be o'er, all storms forever past. We'll cross the great divide to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys of heaven, a heart. A home, a crown, the tempter will be banished, we'll lay a burden down. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus, life trials will see small when we see Christ one glimpse of his their face all sorrow will erase so bravely run the race till we see Christ glorious day when you see Jesus. Amen. Looking forward to that day. It's, um, you know, if you're going to study the book of Matthew 24 and the first, then the first part of 25, Jesus Christ is, um, he talked about the story, seven story, four story in 24, three story in, in the chapter 25, and it's all about He's coming. Amen. He'll come. Amen? Amen. He will come. But people are not ready. They don't want to be ready because one said, well, he will delay. He's going to delay his return. No, he will not delay. Amen. 
Jesus says, I'll come quickly and my reward is with me. You know, they said, no, uh, some people, they don't, they don't want Jesus to come because uh, not only the, 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 the people uh, saying that he will delay, but you see the cruelty of the people nowadays. Uh, cruelty of the people. Not only that we see the cruelty of the people today, you see the carousing attitude of people today. They just partying, they just drink and this and that. It seems like no judgment at all. Oh, but my dearly beloved in the Lord, the book of, it is a fearful, fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And when God uses his finger, remember, he used his finger when he wrote the Ten Commandments. He uses his finger and he wrote on the wall, Behold, your days are numbered. When God uses his finger. But praise God, the New Testament, when God uses his finger, when he wrote in the sun, remember, that lady, and all the people just throw the rock. I don't know what he wrote. I don't have the idea what he wrote. I don't know if a theological person can know what he wrote right there. But I think I believe he used his finger to write something there. And people just left. Amen. Amen. This morning I would like to share to you one of the greatest subjects that you will ever find in all of the scripture. is the word grace. Grace. There is so much confusion in the world concerning salvation today. One of the false beliefs is that gaining ground in our day is the, what they call the universalism. That everyone will eventually be saved in the end. You see that around the day, even in the news. Oh, you be that, uh, you do this, you do that, you would worship this. And then at the end of the road, they say, we're all going to heaven. Oh, no. That's different. They said different ways, but it will end up, oh, no, sir, no, ma'am. Jesus or God only set forth one way to heaven. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. Some says you're going to take the interstate this, interstate 90, interstate 80, and you will come to Michigan. Oh no, but we are not meeting in Michigan. We're meeting in heaven. Amen. Right. The, the Bible clearly speaks concerning salvation that is grounded in grace. In Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1, And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and in sins, wherein in time past ye walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the last of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But verse 4, But, what a great statement. But, God, who is rich in mercy for His great love wherewith He loved us. Father, help us today. May we be able to worship You in spirit and in truth. Speak to our heart, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When Paul left Ephesus, he left Timothy in charge of the church. Because false teachers plague Ephesus, and one of the reasons of the letter is to strengthen the church in the truth of the gospel. Where the message of grace is distorted, the message of salvation is destroyed. Some make, grace, some make grace a license for a sinful living. Because some people don't understand. Well, the people, they would say, you Baptist people, are, you are so boastful because you say salvation by grace, no works. And so when you got saved, that's fine. You're saved, you're forever settled in heaven. What if you continue in sin? Is he still saved? You see, that is a human question. But seek what the scripture says. Amen. And when you see the scripture, you would understand about grace of God. See, understanding grace is essential for a right understanding of salvation. Once we see the truth of grace, you will gain a deeper appreciation for the salvation we have in Christ. 
Grace will provide you with a greater desire for holiness. Amen? A powerful hope for the future. A greater sense of God's love. My dearly beloved, the Lord, we always experience the grace of God every day in our life. Without God's grace, we will not even be here. But praise God for His grace upon our life. Now, the need for grace. If you will notice in verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, And you had He quickened who, uh, who were dead in trespasses and in sins. A dead man can do nothing. Your condition before salvation, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. In Isaiah, the Bible says, all have gone astray. Nobody seek God. And so nobody could say, thank God I found the Lord. No, it is God who came. Amen. Jesus says he came to seek and to save with what's, what's lost. Some people, they, you know, they would proclaim, they says, oh, they're good people. They, are, they have found God. No one can claim a righteousness that meets God's standard. No one can claim they searched for God and failed, they found Him. There is a man who was seeking for uh, a reason to say, but the Bible is not truth. But as, as he keep on reading the Bible, then the Lord showed Himself to him that God is true. The man that we installed as a Thai pastor in our daughter church, he got saved while he was in prison. By God's grace. Now he is pastoring the church because of God's grace. He said he had read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation to find out that if there is a wrong, wrong statement in the Bible. But he said he can't find one. Amen. Amen. Every time he read it, the Lord spoke to his heart. Not only in the current state of deadness, but you are swimming in a pool that is lethal. Hopelessness of your spiritual condition, complete absence of life. There are so many dead people that need the Lord Jesus Christ. This was our condition before you were got saved, before Jesus saved us. Verse number 2, wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this word, according to the prince of the power of the air and the spirit now Work it in the children of disobedience. We're blind. Following a world system that has Satan as a head. People follow the world system. Humanity has values that are contrary to God's standards. You know, those values in advertising. They would say, you deserve what you want. Grab all you can materially and no moral boundaries. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 4. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Yes, they were blind men, but my dearly beloved in the Lord, the gospel of Christ can shine upon them. Amen. We can bring the gospel to the people who need the Lord Jesus Christ as once we were. But thank God, somebody came and reached us. Somebody came and shared the gospel. The word disobedience means all people live in active rebellion with God, against God. There's people today. And it, but I, you know, I thank God while I'm seated there, you were singing the choir is singing, I said, thank God there is still hope for this country. Because there is still a church like this church. Now I mention it from the bottom of my heart. I traveled, I, I, um, in 97, 
I, I was given the privilege to travel with a singing group here in the United States. We traveled for nine months all over the country with a singing group. But then I went home. I was given the chance to come back here. I was invited to preach. I remember a church where I was, when we, we sang in that church with 600 people. When I came back, not even 10 people. And I said, what went wrong? They changed everything. They changed everything. See, I believe in my heart. You use the King James and hymns, God will preserve the church. Amen. Nowadays, they entertain. Yes. We are not here to be entertained. We are here to worship God. We are not here to be pat at the back and say, you're fine. The Bible says we're here to be rebuked, to be reproved, to be corrected. Why? For us to be perfected. Amen. How can we be perfect if we entertain? Entertains are called actor and actress. The original word is hypocrite. Acting someone that they're not. Amen. We are here to worship the living God. And praise God. Still there's hope of this country. We see people right here who truly worship God. Amen. Because if there are one or two or three gathered in my name, God's word or God's presence is there. Praise the Lord. Stay away. Worship God. Amen. See, Satan's active word, uh, active work is to do all that he can to rebel against God and cause others to rebel. Because he knows his doom is at hand. See, in verse number 3, deserving of punishment, all humanity walks this path before your salvation. This was your profile. This was your profile. Following the impulse of the flesh, live for you, your selfish, even your reasoning is affected. This does not mean that a lost man cannot live a respectable life. You could do nothing to earn your salvation. But there are people who walk, you know, respected people, right? Have you watched the, uh, the uh, Republican debate last uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, so those 10 people, or st 10 people, they're running for president. They're people who are res respectable people. Standing behind there, they're being questioned, you know, living with a moral life, maybe, but without Christ, they're nothing. Why? There are people... Uh, I got a privilege to go to uh, there in, the, in Lansing, and they have this, uh, the Senate uh, thing. I was a privilege to meet those uh, uh, politicians there. Well, they're living a moral life. Respectable people, you know, when you say senator or senator, yeah, or a Congress, a Congress, they have that office. But without Christ, nothing. Nothing. See, people can live a respectable life, but you could do nothing to earn your salvation. There is nothing on the earth that could provide for you to be saved without the grace of God. See, I thought I can be saved by my good works. I'll be good. But the Bible says, For all have, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You don't live for the glory of God. And that makes you a sinner. John chapter 16, verse 8 and 9, And when He is come, He will reprove the world of sin, of sin because they believe not on Me. The ultimate sin is failure to believe on Jesus. The ultimate sin is failure to believe on Jesus. You and all the world is born not as children of God, but as children of wrath. With a close relationship to God's wrath, you were under God's wrath. You see, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, He that hath the Son of God hath life, but he that hath not the Son of God, no life. Right? No life. Without Jesus, God's wrath is upon you. And there is nothing you can do about it, my friend. He that, ha he that believeth on the Son 
hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John chapter 3, verse 36. Not waiting for wrath, if you are here and without Christ, you live under the sentence of God's wrath. My friend, you need grace. Because you are in an impossible situation. We are all in an impossible situation. God came with grace. Your spiritual is set forth in the, uh, in the three verses that we have read a while ago. Your insufficiency became ground for God's work on your behalf. Without God's intervention, you and I are lost forever. God is going to act to bring life to your spiritual deadness. In verse number 4, but God, he said. Amen. But God who is rich in mercy, praise the Lord. But God who is rich in mercy, God looks with pity upon your situation and has the resources to bring to your situation. In mercy, God will not give you what you deserve. Wrath was what you have earned, but God comes with mercy. Amen? Wonderful that He is rich in mercy, overflowing with mercy. And thank God for God's mercy. God's love. You cannot describe with the human tongue the love of God. No, you cannot. Even songs. You know, a lot of people today, uh, they would describe or sing about song, love song about the Lord Jesus Christ, or they would write in a poem. But you can never describe the love of God. Just two small letters. For God so loved the world cannot be measured. The love of God. Who can understand the love of God? Who can? With the scripture explaining to us, wow, His grace. Because of that grace, His mercy is so rich. His love is so everlasting that we are here this morning. Verse 5 and verse number 6. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at that verse. I am, I am not a linguist. I am not an English person. You are, amen. But look at the sentence. He said, and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at that. We are still here, but we are already seated in heaven. Amen? Wow, that's a grace. Here it emphasizes that God's work is carried out in those spiritually dwelt God's, God's work, not man. Amen? It's not a work of man. It's God's work. Made alive. Since you were spiritually dead, you need the spiritual life given in Christ. Only through Jesus you can have life. He died and was made alive physically. You died and made alive spiritually. The resurrection of Jesus guarantees a spiritual life. Amen. The resurrection completes everything. Amen. Allah is still in his tomb. Or Allah or Muhammad. Amen. Buddha is still in his tomb. Confucius is still in his tomb. But Jesus is no longer in his tomb. Amen. He is not there. Not even a single hair you can find in the tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. No bone, nothing, nothing you can find because Jesus has risen from the dead. He is not here. He is risen. Amen. No power on earth can hold him down. He is not here. Jesus is risen. And one day he'll come again. Amen. That's the grace of God. Of course, when you see the baptism, it pictures 
Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 to 4, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in death, and like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. We are now alive in Christ. What a dead person needs most is, uh, is life. You are a new person in Christ, no longer dead to spiritual things, but alive. Amen. Part of a new family, new outlook in life, new reason for living. The Holy Spirit is in you, teaching you and guiding your life, hope for the future. The Bible says in verse 6, seated, both the ra raised and seated are in the past tense. Amen. In the past tense, not waiting, already accomplished, not waiting to sit in the heavenlies. You're already there, sitting. What does it mean to be in the heavenlies? Before salvation, you were in this world, dead to God, incapable of earning salvation, did not glorify God. You are no longer dominated by your dead condition. The blindness of Satan is gone. The penalty of wrath is removed. You have eternal life. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship, our home is heaven. Thank God for that. See, in the midst of all of this, Paul inserts something right here in verse number 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The purpose of grace, the goal of grace, is to eternally glorify God. Amen. Thank God for salvation. Well, what are we going to do? We're here to glorify God. Glorify God in all our walks of life. Christianity is not just a religion. It should be our way of life. Worship God. You know why mission exists? You know why mission exists? The reason why mission exists is, is because of the absence of true worshipers. You would study from Genesis, God called Abraham because there is no true worshiper in the place where he's going to bring him. Here, there's no true worshiper, but praise God, many years ago, somebody came to this place and built this ministry build this work, and now we are here worshiping the true God. Amen. In Thailand, there is no true worship, but now there are Thai people who came to know Christ by His grace. Now they worship the true God. When we worship the true God, amen, we walk to glorify God. We worship God in our life. See, worship is heart attitude. It's not just coming on Sunday. Worship is every day. When everything in our life, Lord, it's no longer me. It's not me. It's yours. Sometimes we are still thinking we live that this life is ours. No more. God owns it. Amen. Let's put it this way. As Apostle Paul says and wrote it. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Amen. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Amen. I live now for the glory of God. My life should shine as the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Because you are the light and the salt of the world. Praise God for His grace. Praise God. We're here to eternally 
glorify God. Oh, be one day when we will be there in heaven. We'll just be singing, glorifying God. Amen. I can sing the whole day. Praise God. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you.